Uh, today we start with uh, a series of uh, webinars called Reflections on MEC. Uh, we won't say to, we are going to describe what MEC is, it's the Moodle Educator Certificate. Uh, but most importantly, uh, we are inviting people who went through this uh, certification process and we are wondering, uh, can I, uh, can um, a certificate change uh, someone's life? Uh, we have Tis uh, with us. Uh, Tis uh, Kirkland is e-learning consultant from Catalyst uh, and she's gonna share uh, her experience with uh, MEC. And I am Anna Kressa, educator advisor and MEC coordinator here at the uh, Moodle HQ. So before uh, letting Tis speak about her experience, uh, let me give you a quick introduction about what is the Moodle Educator Certificate. Uh, the MEC is an international certificate for teaching with uh, Moodle. And it is exclusively uh, offered by Moodle certified service providers. Be careful, the MEC is not a basic Moodle training. No, it's not even an advanced Moodle training. The point is that MEC is not a training at all. Uh, it is a certification process focused on meeting learners' needs with Moodle. And it requires that candidates have a real life experience uh, in teaching with Moodle for at least a year. So the MEC Educator Certification constitutes of six courses, not training courses, certification courses that lead to six badges and when someone has all the six badges, gets the MEC, this one certificate. Now we have six courses and six badges because uh, the MEC is based on the European framework for the digital competence of educators. Uh, perhaps you know it as DigiCombedu. And this um, framework has organized the educators uh, professional competencies and pedagogic competencies as well as learning competencies in uh, six areas the professional engagement teaching and learning uh, digital resources the assessment the empowering learners and the facilitating learners digital companies and um, overall the, this framework suggests uh, contains 22 competencies organized in these uh, six areas. And if we take a closer look, we can see, for example, that in the teaching and learning um, area, we talk about teaching and guidance and uh, self-regulated learning and collaborative learning, all this stuff. So the question is, how can we do all this inside Moodle. When you uh, will join, or if you think to join the uh, a partner and take the MEC, uh, you're going to see a page like this one with uh, the MEC program and all the courses listed here. As you can see, we have the courses, and we can uh, we are going to see one of the courses, the teaching and learning course. Uh, specifically inside to see how it looks. All the digital, all the MEC courses uh, have the same structure. So we begin with uh, a welcome section where we have the announcements form and a book, uh, how this course works uh, with uh, details uh, about uh, how the course is organized, uh, the time needed and stuff like that. The second section contains uh, is the what do you already know and contains a self-assessment check-in uh, quiz. This is a test based on the selfie for teachers, a very well-known uh, tool, especially in the European area. It's a self-assessment quiz where everybody can uh, evaluate where uh, his stands at uh, on specific uh, uh, competencies. And the third section is the teaching and learning overview. Actually, it's the overview section. 
here we have uh, mainly books and uh, quizzes. The books basically explain the competence and contextualize the competence within Moodle. It's not uh, about how Moodle works and uh, how to set up Moodle activities or resources. It's just explaining which tools can be used to achieve and demonstrate uh, this to meet this competence. And uh, there is always a self uh, there is always um, self-evaluated quiz accompanying the uh, the book, so people can um, take it and uh, confirm their understanding. Uh, the number of books and the and the relevant quizzes depends on the number of the competencies existing in its area. So in some courses we have three, in some courses we have four, like here, and in some courses, in one course actually we have five. The next section is called your assessed task and is the place where the actual assessment is happening. Here we have two assignments and uh, candidates need to um, write these two assignments, it's uh, 500 to 800 words for each assignment. And they need to answer specific questions, uh, real life uh, problems, including their own experiences. Uh, candidates can include screenshots of a course they have created or of a demo course, but most usually uh, from a real course that have uh, offered. And they can include a link to a course as well, giving uh, the facilitators permissions so they can uh, actually view the course. Um, they have the right to resubmit twice after the first grading, and they require a minimum B2 as a pass score. Now, what is a B2? You can see here we have a um, candidates rubric. It's the rubric that we use to assess uh, those two assignments. Well, we have uh, vertically uh, listed the four competencies and horizontally you can see the levels that vary from A to B1, B2, C1, C4, C2. Now, if you are familiar with the Common European Framework of Reference for Language, uh, you will recognize this uh, seem this uh, scale of uh, A, B, C levels. Uh, this is, uh, these are the levels that are used and are suggested uh, from the digital competence framework of educators from the DigiCommit2. And we have adopted and used it here in the MEC. So if you're standing at A1, then it's too soon for you to think about the MEC. You, you still need some experience, you may need training. And again, if you are at level A2, again, you need more experience and more training. If you are at level B1, then perhaps you are a good candidate to start uh, MEC. Um, and at the B2, we have the pass score for the MEC. It is for uh, independent users, for experts. Moodle experts, teacher experts. And if you are at level C, then you are already a leader or a top trainer. Um, <clears throat> MEC is already offered in uh, seven different languages. It is uh, fully translated in um, Spanish, French, uh, Portuguese, um, Chinese, uh, Japanese and Arabic, and uh, there are more languages to more translations to come uh, eventually. But at the moment, you can take them in uh, in these languages. And how this works? It's very very easy. If you just log in into the MEC site, you can simply change the system role, the system uh, language, and that will also change the language. Not just of the system, but also the content. Um, so it's 
super easy. And we are now passing over to Tis to hear her reflections on MEC and how and see how MEC helped her change her life. I'm going to mute myself, so I'm leaving the floor to this. <laughs> Thank you. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko tararua ngā maunga teru nei taku ngāku, ngāko, ko kai farafara te awa e mahia nei aku maharahara. E mihi ana ki ngā tohu onehi o te whanganui a tāra e noho nei o. Ko Kirkland toku Fano, ko Tish toku ingoa. Can you go to the next slide, please? So that's a greeting um, in the in Tadeo, which is the uh, indigenous language um, of the Maori people of New Zealand, and uh, we commonly or often start um, a meeting or a talk um, with that particular kind of greeting. Um, so I'll translate for you. Um, so I said to greetings, and I'm letting you know a little bit about me and. Um, who I am and where I stand in the world so that we can make some connections together maybe. Um, so I said to you that um, the Tararua Hills have my heart. Those are the hills that um, are close to where I grew up. Um, the Kaitharafara stream um, eases my worries. Um, so that's a stream, a river, um, a piece of water that I feel close to. And then I said that I um, recognise the ancestral and spiritual landmarks of where I live, which is Te Whanganui Atara or Wellington in New Zealand. And then I told you my surname, Kirkland, my first name, Tish, and then I want to say Noreira, Tena Koto, Tena Koto, Tena Koto Katoa, which is um, greetings and blessings to you all. Um, so my name is Tish, Tish Kirkland. I'm located in um, New Zealand. Um, I work, I'm an e-learning consultant at the Moodle Partner Catalyst IT, and I've been working here since 2019. If you go to the next slide, you can see where New Zealand is located on this map if you haven't worked that out already. So I'm proud to work for Catalyst IT, a premium certified Moodle provider and the largest New Zealand owned company specialising in free and open source technologies and services. As of 2016, Catalyst is the fourth biggest contributor to the Moodle project and the largest in Australasia behind Moodle HQ. In 2019, we were globally recognised for our major contributions to Moodle and in 2021-2021 we were awarded the Moodle Global, uh, Moodle Global Certified Service Provider of the Year. So I'm very proud to be working for Catalyst IT. Next slide please. So I know this webinar is called Reflections on MEC but for me, MEC is more than that. It's a part of a wider reflection and consolidation and a lot of Moodle experience and other prior learning. So I'm going to tell you a story today about how I arrived at the MEC and where it has taken me since. I graduated from Victoria University in, um, with uh, and Wellington College of Education with a BA in education and a postgraduate diploma of teaching. And then I went on to work as a training manager for The Body Shop New Zealand, where I experienced what it was like to work for an organisation that had values, put principles on a par with profit, using their position to facilitate change to have a wider impact. And through my work and connections at the body shop, I had the opportunity 
to volunteer in developing countries and help people in need have a better living situation. And these included Samoa and Timor-Leste. These experiences for me reinforced my passion for supporting human rights, in particular, the rights of the child. And especially when one is, a, is, when one is in a position of privilege, something that I later clicked with when I heard about the Moodle philosophy of, uh, and practice of open source. <laughs> the concept of helping others led me to a 17 year career um, English language teaching, where my objective was to teach others a skill that I had been born into so that they could achieve their own personal and professional goals to live in an English speaking country or to do business with English speaking clients. I had the opportunity to live and work in several countries and visit many more, which was an amazing experience. Over this whole time, I had been interested in computers, technology and learning, and some of this was before the internet was widely available. And this was something I utilized later when I realized I could use a Moodle site to curate and create content for my students. So I first heard about Moodle from a friend in 2008, not long after we'd moved to Australia and decided to have a go with it. It was hard. Initially, I used a site hosted by my friend who had introduced me to Moodle to curate online content and later to host my own courses and content. And this became my newly developed small business which was to teach and facilitate courses for the writing component of a particular English language test. And I hope none of you have PTSD from looking at the name of that test. I read documentation, asked questions, and sometimes I found though it was so developer focused that as a front end person, a site administrator, a teacher and content creator, I really felt out of my depth. Plus, it was like a new language to me. So many words I hadn't used before and certainly not necessarily in that context. However, I persevered and it led me to meeting others who employed me to do moodily things, mainly along the lines of instructional design and course creation. In 2012, I attended my first Moodle moot, which in retrospect had a huge impact on me. I learned how people were using Moodle to give back to the wider community, and I learned what open source was. I was hooked. I did everything I could get my hands on, Moodle courses and certifications, a MOOC. I set myself up a Moodle cloud site, and I joined the Moodle Users Association. I loved the interaction and collaboration that the community brought, and as a sole trader working from home, I really thrived on this. I attended moots when I could, presented at moots, and met many inspiring people, some of whom have become mentors and lifelong friends. As a result of all this, I got my online business up and running properly. And in addition to online tuition, it was used at a local English language school in Brisbane as part of their language program. So with all this in mind, I had been looking for something to formalize my experience with Moodle, something industry recognized and something that could open doors. While all this Moodling had been going on, I still had my day job as an English language teacher and tried to use Moodle as much as possible, both in the classroom and out of the classroom. However, I knew I wanted more Moodle in my life. When I heard about the MEC at a Moodle moot, I was very excited. This certification seemed to fit exactly into my experience of Moodle and my love of education. I wanted to do more Moodle things, and this seemed like the perfect opportunity, which it was, and it led me to great things. I undertook the certification as soon as I could, and I found it to be very enjoyable and rewarding experience, and it consolidated a lot of what I had already done. 
On that note, I highly recommend getting as much possible, as much experience as possible with Moodle before undertaking the certification. There were aspects I struggled with. I had to um, resubmit assignments. Um, my, I found that my lack of experience with a range of Moodle sites and different clients and their needs, having only administered my own site and own clients was um, something that I struggled with. But I enjoyed the scenarios um, and imagining the solutions to complete the assessments. And although it's not essential, I found that using my Moodle Cloud site to help test ideas and to showcase them was really helpful. For me, my favorite aspects of the course were receiving constructive feedback, sharing ideas and getting creative. I liked having the descriptive rubric with criteria to aim for and having been an examiner in the past, I was familiar with the rubrics and the CFR levels, the A1 to C2 levels. Doing the MEC had real life applications for me and I was able to later repurpose some of my assessments in what happened next. So it turns out that for me, the MEC was what I had been providing to my students in terms of English language teaching and IELTS preparation. MEC was for me what I had been providing to them. So while I was in Australia, I saw a job advertised with Catalyst IT, a Moodle partner in Aotearoa, New Zealand, my home country. And having the MEC gave me the confidence to apply. And I used some of my MEC assignments um, as part of a portfolio that I created for my job application. And I used Moodle Cloud to showcase these. And I'm happy to report that I was successful in my job application. And we moved back to New Zealand after nearly uh, 20 years away. And I am so happy to be close to family and be raising at home, raising our daughter um, and in a job that I love. While working at Catalyst, I've since used other MEC assignments as a base for speaking at conferences, such as the New Zealand Moodle Moot, the Irish and UK Moodle Moot, and a national conference for English language teachers here in New Zealand. And I've built on some of my assignments to add content to MoodleNet and to uh, contribute to a TESOL language um, association newsletter and online e-learning world articles. And at Catalyst, I've had the opportunity to work with some on some really exciting projects. Uh, such as working with a developing country who is using Moodle for their national primary and secondary education during the pandemic, working with charity organisations, in particular those who provide community education about the environment and mental health, and working with organisations that promote women's health and health and wellbeing for Māori and Pacifica communities in New Zealand. And because I work for a Moodle partner, I was able to become, um, to train to become an MEC facilitator and Catalyst offers the MEC through several of our offices worldwide. So sharing and giving back is important to me and it ties in with the Moodle philosophy of open source collaboration and learning together. And if it weren't for open source, free courses, collaboration, and the friendliness and encouragement of the Moodle community, and just plain having a go, I would not be where I am today. My involvement in and with the Moodle community, now how, no matter how small it may seem, gave me the skills and ability to work and therefore save money to pay for the MEC. And in my opinion, and my experience, the investment was well worth it. Your journey can take any form and there are many varied paths. Moodle and the MEC opened doors for me and I believe it can open doors for you too. Before you take the MEC, I would say get involved, uh, read the documentation about Moodle, get a Moodle cloud site, attend moots, get badges, 
get as much experience beforehand as possible. Take as many courses as you can through the Moodle Academy and through certified partners. And I would say, go for it. <laughs> Kia ora. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Tis. Uh, what a journey, I would say. Uh, you're a real proof that um, a certification can uh, actually change someone's life. <laughs> uh, if you want to, if you are interested in uh, Moodle, yep, I would say go for it. Uh, let me check uh, the chat if we have any comments, any questions, if uh, anyone uh, wants uh, to jump in. Uh, <laughs> Kelly was impressed with uh, uh, the greeting. Yeah, nobody had idea <laughs> about it. Um, Roxana says, uh, thank you for sharing uh, such a uh, rich experience. Alex, uh, thanks uh, also. Uh, very inspiring, uh, Laurent says. And uh, yeah, well, my question to, to all of you, uh, what do you think? Are you ready for the MEC? If you want to know the answer, it's very, very, very easy to take a, a little test, uh, the selfie for, for, for uh, educators. You can find it in the same um, course where you found the link where we are now. And uh, uh, you can take and you can see if you are ready to take the MEC right now or uh, if you need to come back at a later uh, stage where you will have gained more experience or get some training from the academy or from uh, cer uh, certified uh, service providers. So um, before uh, we close this uh, session, uh, I would like to let you know a little bit about how you can get involved here in the Moodle Academy and help us grow uh, and con by contributing to its development. Uh, being in the Academy, you can be an active member. You can uh, suggest topic ideas. Uh, what would you like to, to see us covering in the future? Uh, you can join the Get Involved course and make your own suggestions, uh, ask the subjects you are interested in, vote for subjects that have been already suggested. Tell us, what do you want to hear from us? Um, you can also contribute to the webinars if you uh, have a um, particular skill, if you are an expert in some area, you have something interesting to say as a uh, piece, uh, please. Uh, let us know. Uh, presenters, uh, webinar presenters will gain a badge, uh, present a presenter's badge uh, from the academy. And you can also contribute to courses. You can share your expertise. You can share. Uh, um, you can contribute on the development of uh, courses and gain a course builder badge. And of course, please help spread the word about uh, uh, MEC. Tell your friends and colleagues about Moodle Academy and MEC, I would say. And uh, consider to join the Academy, the courses uh, of the Academy and gain badges. Um, tell others about uh, the Moodle Academy. And yes, do take the, uh, are you ready for the MEC quiz? And if you're ready, um, <laughs> Come, our partners uh, are ready uh, to uh, welcome you and uh, they will support you through, through the certification uh, process. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm gonna make a last check uh, in the chat. Uh, we have a couple questions. Um, okay. Well, we have several, <laughs> several, um, several uh, messages. Uh, Lauren asks the selfie training uh, is the selfie 
test you mean um it's inside uh, the MEC quiz called the are you ready for MEC quiz um alex says i'm not quite sure if i'm prepared well enough for the MEC. so uh, some partners can take can give uh, may offer the uh one of the six modules but i would say the most safe uh option is to take the quiz and contact uh, certified service provider um take an interview with them talk with them at uh, explain them what are your doubts and uh, where you don't feel very confident that they might offer you uh, training, a dedicated training on this specific area, and uh, they can prepare you in order to go through the uh, certification process. Uh, we have a question from John. I noticed that Dana stressed uh, that MEC is not a training. Can you say some more about the difference between training and certification? Yes. Uh, of course. Well, training is uh, meant to, to, to teach you. You have unlimited attempts. Uh, you are there to learn. You can um, repeat things until you get the uh, mastery of a uh, specific skill. But here is a certification process, so things are strict. You cannot have unlimited attempts in the assignments, for example. You don't have unlimited time to complete MEC whenever you want. Uh, partners set uh, usually specific uh, time frames for completing the MEC, and uh, you can come back if something urgent happens, but you cannot take the process for more than longer for than two years. Um, certification means that things are strict and it's not just the partners who review uh, the assignments. Uh, partners do the first uh, assessment and then uh, Moodle HQ uh, education team confirms and uh, verifies uh, the assessments and confirms the, the, that you are ready for uh, certification. Uh, T says that, um, yeah, she took her, it took her about eight weeks uh, to complete um, the MEC. Yes, uh, and uh, yeah, sometimes may take longer indeed. Uh, thank you, Roxana, Kelly. Happy to have you here. Uh, Yes, yeah, so as this says, uh, the certification process requires some <laughs> quality time, I would say, to dedicate a lot of time and a lot of uh, thinking time uh, and writing, um, because you have to uh, actually reflect on your experience, on, on your, yeah, on your ex teaching experience with Moodle and uh, suggest ideas, suggest the best options to do things in the scenarios we have. Okay. Um, does the MEC could be started at any time or uh, any, or in particular edition state? Well, it depends uh, the, um, the, part, the Moodle partner that you will contact with. Uh, we usually suggest to search for people for uh, Moodle partners uh, near you, so you can have an ES uh, in the time zone. And uh, this will uh, they will tell you when the next session starts. Some of them offer them on specific dates. Some others have it open all year, every day. So you have to talk to them directly. You can uh, contact Tis, for example, in uh, Catalyst. You can uh, contact uh, Kelly at Moodle US, uh, depends where you are. If you go to the uh, moodle.com slash partners, 
uh, you can uh, find uh, the list of uh, the certified service providers and uh, filter the results from uh, based on the MEC in your area. I think uh, we haven't left anything open, uh, any any questions open uh, in the in the chat, and uh, this, <laughs> yes, MEC has a price, but the price of the MEC depends uh, heavily. It's defined by the Moodle partners. So we cannot tell you the uh, the price of uh, the MEC. You have to contact them directly. How does the process work after MEC completion? Is there an interview after the tasks are completed? Uh, Aurelia asks this, and uh, Aurelia, no, the the interview actually comes before uh, partners walk you through the MEC before allow, they allow you to take the MEC because if if you are new to Moodle or if you are a new teacher there's no point to to try to for the MEC it's for experienced users uh, for experienced educators so the interview comes first so they can confirm that you have the necessary level uh, of experience and uh, then you're just enrolling to the courses and you complete the courses. And at the end, the facilitators alert uh, the education team in uh, Moodle headquarters to review and confirm, uh, verify um, your work, candidates work. So thank you very much all of you for being here early in morning or late at night uh it was really nice to have you and it was really nice to start the year with uh, such inspiring um presentation story i would say from uh this thank you so much has been a pleasure